this might be the future of meat. Welcome to the future. It's delicious. 100% raised in a lab. Cell cultured meat is a way of making meat that's more efficient. Making our food more efficiently will be key to feeding the world's growing population. In the next 50 years, we'll need to raise more food than we've produced in the last 10,000 years, combined, even as climate change makes agriculture less predictable. You know, a lot of nonprofits have tried to persuade people to change the way they eat, but by and large, Americans like to eat meat. Cell cultured meat isn't a veggie burger or the bleeding plant-based proteins like the Impossible Burger. It's actual meat. And startups in the US, UK, Israel, Netherlands, Japan, and China are racing to get this technology to market and on people's dinner tables. They promise a kind of utopia where we can eat as much meat as we want without straining the environment or hurting an animal. Eventually, we see a world where the majority of meat made doesn't require killing a single animal, doesn't require all that land, doesn't require all that water, and ends up you know, having a barbecue that just tastes as good as, as I remember uh, when I was growing up. But will cell cultured meat live up to that promise? I'm Phoebe Bradford. This is Quartz. Subscribe to our channel. On August 5, 2013, Dutch scientist Mark Post presented the first cell-cultured hamburger to the world. The product wasn't perfect. It didn't look or taste like a normal hamburger, and it cost $330,000 to make. But it was a promising start. Dr. Post's burger told the world that sustainable, scalable, slaughter-free, antibiotic-free meat might be possible. That could be game-changing for the planet. The world demands more meat every year. And large-scale animal production, so-called factory farms, has raced to meet that demand, but not without environmental consequences. Livestock are responsible for 14.5% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. 26% of the planet's ice-free land is used for livestock grazing. 33% of croplands are used for livestock feed production. And in the US, 70% of all medically important antibiotics are sold for use in animals. And even with these large-scale farm operations, demand for meat is set to outpace production. You try everything yet? I tried the chicken nugget. It was delicious. Okay. Josh Tetrick and his team at Just are in the race to develop cell-cultured meat. They're working on making Wagyu beef. And they've already cultivated and harvested edible chicken. To make their chicken nugget, Josh's team only needs a handful of cells. I mean, this would be probably even a small scale enough cells to make some nuggets. Vitor Santo is the associate director of cellular agriculture at Just. This flask of pink fluid are cells he's cultivating into meat we can consume. And from one sample that you take, how much meat can you potentially create? So theoretically, from one single isolation, one biopsy, we can get enough cells to make our full line of chicken products. To make a just nugget, technicians collect stem cells from those isolations and put them in a nutrient-dense liquid medium. Think of it as the feed, and it goes in a bioreactor. There, cell mass grows and proliferates. The resulting product, a combination of muscle and fat tissue, is identical to conventional meat on a molecular level. This is great in terms of texture, because it shows that the cells are not only producing the proteins that will give the flavor of muscle, but also the texture. And what do you say to those who are still uh, maybe hesitant? What it literally is, is getting cells from animals, then compare it to what currently exists. What currently exists, I'm not talking about Old McDonald had a farm in you know Southern Alabama, I'm talking about large industrial production of animal protein. Look at those two side by side, and then ask yourself, what are the other options? The problem is that it's still very hard to compare those two side by side. Companies have made little scientific data available for independent review, which makes critics wonder if cultured meat can make it out of the lab and onto our plates. There's not a production facility that exists yet where we can measure, this is how much water this uses, this is how much electricity it takes, this is how energy intensive this is. Chase Purdy is writing a book on cell cultured meat. And until we have that information, we won't know exactly how environmentally friendly this new process is. This is cause for concern for people like Danielle Beck. 
director of government affairs at the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, which lobbies for the interests of the beef industry and small family farms. Until, you know, I think life cycle assessments can be conducted on a commercial scale, um, until these products have been put forward for folks like the American Meat Science Association to get a hold of, you know, until we can work better together. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of questions left unanswered. In March, the USDA and FDA reached an agreement on how they would share the responsibility of overseeing cell-based meat products, from early growth stage to packaged product. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association supported the regulations, and Josh says they're also a win for the cell-cultured meat industry. In order for the biggest customers in the world and consumers to feel comfortable with this, there needs to be a regulatory framework. We believe it's safe, we know it to be safe, but you know the goal is not to feed ourselves, the goal is to feed millions of people. This is only the first step in the battle to get cultured meat to market. The agreement between the USDA and FDA hasn't announced how these products will be labeled. The conventional meat industry is very reticent to let these cell cultured meat companies call their products meat. What's in a name? That's like the million dollar question for a lot of the people that are in this world. Why it matters is that this is like how people will perceive this product. In states like Missouri, legislation has passed banning cell cultured meat from even being called meat. It's inspired other states to follow suit. So the labeling is important because at the level of DNA, this is meat. But the reality is it's going to be a major hurdle if we have to invent new language to talk about something as familiar to people as meat. Do you think that the biggest barrier to entering the marketplace right now for cell cultured meat is regulation or the technology? Uh, regulation, absolutely. The technology is ready. The science is there. The science has been there for a while. It's really all about governments around the world figuring out how to regulate these products. It could be that cell cultured meat will debut abroad where technology has advanced, public consensus is encouraging, and regulations are more favorable, like China. But when governments do finally allow cell cultured meat to enter the marketplace, Chase thinks grocery stores everywhere will stock it. I don't think that sort of this conventional meat that you can get today so easily will ever truly fully go away. I think that if cell cultured meat can be about the same price as the meat we buy today, I think if it looks the same and I think if it tastes the same, it will be just as common to see it in a grocery store as conventional meat. Hey, we're making a series for Quartz members we think you'll like. It's called Exceptional Humans, and it's about people whose minds stretch the limits of human potential. Click here to sign up for a free membership trial to get full access to exclusive videos and articles. Quartz members get a daily education on the forces reshaping the global economy.